Hi, I'm Eric Blake. I'm a boat builder at Brooklyn Boatyard. Years ago, friends and I started Off Center Harbor to bring you inside the world of wooden boats and introduce you to some of the people involved in the creation of them. If you like this video, there's hundreds more. Just follow the link in the description below. Well, Pete, it's great to be aboard. I've admired Theo, pictures of it, for a long, long time. Here we are. Proportions are perfect. She's just lovely to look at. The hull is designed with a fine entry forward, round bilge forward, and it transitions through to absolutely dead flat in the stern with a hard chine. So the aim is to try to get a hull that's a really good compromise between slow speed performance and when you start to drive it quite hard, it's got a bit of chine to sit on back there. So what's her speed, cruising speed? Um, I guess I spend a lot of time doing 12 knots or 13 knots or something, but uh, it's also perfectly happy at 15 knots, so it just depends on the sea conditions really. And wound up, what will she do? I think the top is about 19 knots. This boat has a very high average speed, so that if you looked at the average conditions in the Gulf, this boat will keep the average speed up in just about all of the conditions. And that's probably more important than what you can do just on a flat calm day, so that's where this thing really wins out here. Peter, what's she like in, in uh, following sea? Uh, I guess with the canoe stern, it's just perfectly under control in the whole time. It's, there's no tendency to broach or anything like that. I've actually tried driving down waves in about a six meter swell and driving the bow in so the water rides off here, but there's no tendency to broach or drive it under. It just, it just performs really, really well. There's a davit on the stern here. It's good for lifting about 80 kgs. It has a couple of purposes. One is to lift the dinghy onto the back so that if you're in rough sea, you can carry the dinghy sitting really nicely on here or lift the dinghy out of the water when in rough anchorage, but also, Another purpose with this big tackle here is that if somebody falls over the side, I've got something that I can actually haul somebody aboard with. How long is she and it's how heavy? It's 29 foot 6 and uh, 1250 kilograms. She's smooth as a smelt. How is she built? What's the skin? Um, it's, it's cold molded. Um, there's, there's two skins of cowrie here, two diagonal skins of cowrie down to the uh, chine, which feeders out at about here. And below the chine, there's three skins. So the bottom is really, really strong. So you bent the skins right over the stringers, nothing else supporting them? I had, it was built over frames. Oh, it was? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, as you've seen, it's, there's actually quite a bend in the top sides there. By having such a curve, you can make it lighter, but also it's way stronger. And then your second skin goes diagonally the in the other direction? The second skin goes diagonally the other way, yeah. And then covered with glass. Covered with glass, yeah. This is mighty comfortable. Yeah, it's quite ergonomic, hey? Eh? You can actually stand on there and look out up over the top of the cabin roof there. Well, with an extension on your staff, you could actually steer from ah, back could, here. You could just grab hold of that yeah. and just steer on there. The rudder's balanced, so it yeah, doesn't actually take very much force to... Yeah. And these, these floorboards are all filled with foam, so they're really, they're really lightweight. Um, otherwise, all of the floorboards and the bunk boards, if they were solid timber, it would probably add another 100 kgs to the whole boat by the time you made them solid. So, And this bronze fitting that's down here, that's for the table leg. There's a table leg that we screw in there and there's a table that's just over here. It's quite a good little space with the, with the table here. Well, that's, that's pretty nice. I'm going to sit here and lean back. Is this an access panel? Yeah, this is this hole. This hole. Well, the entire thing comes out. There's, right? Yeah, there's a fuel tank underneath here and there's a fuel tank under there. And this whole seat and this engine box is completely removable. In about three or four minutes I can actually take this whole cover and all these covers off and the seat so you can completely walk around the entire engine. Wow. And the engine is just a little motor car engine that sits just inside here. You can see the whole engine is only from here to here long. And there's no water-cooled manifold. It just comes straight out the standard manifold into a water lock muffler and then out over the side. So for marinizing it, the gearbox isn't actually mounted on the engine. So the gearbox is mounted more rigid to take the thrust. Can you tell us about fuel efficiency, Peter? 
when you're doing seven and a half or eight knots, we're looking at somewhere over a liter an hour, just a little bit over a liter an hour. I think the range would be somewhere in the order of 800 miles or for the fuel that's carried on board, which is 120 liters. So, yeah, one, one, one fill up at the beginning of the season, that's all the fuel you use. You've done the same thing here that you did aft. With a lovely yeah, little bead underneath incline the, seat and yeah. got the bead underneath of course. Yeah. Got to have that. yeah, the seat's all super lightweight as well. And the staff over here is where the staff house comes from of course, the steering staff. The engine control is a steering throttle. And the gear shifters on here, yeah. And some spectra and there's some whole lot of sheaves and things underneath here to guide these steering ropes back. But even at speed, Unless you're doing a really sharp turn, you can just steer with two fingers. It's just literally featherweight like that. And then over on this side, just in here is a fridge. And it has a little freezer in the top up here. Um, it's a little, the thing that I have that's a little bit different about the uh, fridge on board is it doesn't cool by air. It's actually cooled from the seawater. Even in the really, really hot summer, this uses only about one third to a half as much energy out of your battery. As a normal fridge uses, so it was a, it was hugely successful. It'll keep it'll keep frozen in there just on battery power for days and days without running the well, engine. Oh, what a nice idea! And in the bottom of there is the battery, and that's just a that's actually another seat. It's actually a really nice place to sit when the autopilot's going. You can just sit here and um, up here like this. It's actually in a seaway. This is a really nice, comfortable place to sit. Do you have an autopilot? Yeah, I have an autopilot. How does that work? Uh, it just sits on. It's a tiller pilot that actually just hooks onto this little thing just there. I see. Yeah, and it works really, really well. What's and in the, the box? In the, the box is a that's a footstool for when you're sitting on the seat. It's also a really good place to sit when you want to thing on, when you want to work on this bench here or something like that. So that's actually quite a good seat. And it's also the galley. So when you open the lid, there's a there's a little gas stove in here. Um, it's a butane stove. Yeah, it's a butane stove, and then there's a couple of drawers, cutlery drawers and things which are in the bottom underneath here. Yeah. And you can, you can move it around all the way, it's a, just a lightweight cedar box. And this one here is the tool chest, which just, that's some of the tools which are the little cedar box hold the tools and things in. Yeah. There's plenty of space for two people or three people. It's 13 feet from there to here, so yeah. you can actually easy fit two people this way and one that way. Nice. It's more for two people. But sure. Yeah. Under there and under here is most of the food storage for the galley and lesser used stuff that's under here. From here forward, there's not a whole lot really. My grandfather always used to say, what you haven't got can't go wrong. So, there we go. We haven't got too much to go wrong. What do we have here, Peter? Oh, uh, that's the mast and the sail for the for the dinghy. That's one of my passions, is to get in the dinghy and just sail around and explore. So, I'm, I'm a sailor, really. You uh, cruise this boat a lot. Oh, we've been all over the place, yeah. When you're towing it along, you can just park on the side of the road and camp on here. You've got like a mobile camper van in many ways all around the Rotorua Lakes, down to Taupo, across to the Wellington, over on the ferry to Marlborough Sound, Agro Tasman National Park, and down as far as Christchurch. Yeah, all of the places by sea there too. We've done everything with the boat, which is what would have been my dream. So it's just... It's perfect. Yeah. Thanks for watching this video by Off Center Harbor. If you like it, there's hundreds more. Just follow the link in the description below.